Hey you guys, it's Sarah here. Welcome back to my channel. As you can tell, I am in a total bridal vibe today. I am so excited to be doing this destination wedding Q&A video with you guys. I had so many questions you guys had about my destination wedding process, the planning, all the things that went into it. So I've got my trophy wife t-shirt, my bridal robe that I got ready in at our resort in Mexico, my wifey mug, I got my coffee, you guys. I'm so ready to dive into all things destination wedding. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. I am so glad you're here. Make sure you subscribe before you watch the video so you do not miss anything else. But if you guys wanna hear all about my destination wedding, and I might even throw in a little sneak peek at the end of some of my photos and give you guys a little peek into what the day was like, then you can go ahead and keep on watching this video. Okay, didn't leave the robe on because it was a little bit hot, but let's dive right into the questions you guys submitted. I can't wait to answer all of them and tell you guys so much about our wedding because it was freaking amazing. I had the best time ever and I'm so happy I followed my heart and decided to do a destination wedding. Even though people all weren't on board with it in the beginning, I am really, really glad that I stayed true to what I wanted to do. I think that is so important. So I'm going to dive in and start answering your guys' questions. You guys sent them on Instagram and on Facebook. So we're going to dive right into the questions. I'm um, recording podcast audio at the same time. So if you see me doing this, that's why. Okay, so I want to dive into your Instagram. Instagram questions first. First of all, has anyone noticed how many bots you get whenever you put a question thing up on Instagram? I absolutely hate it. I think it's so annoying, but I still got a lot of good questions from you guys. So I want to scroll through and find a few of them. One of the first questions was, did you find any creative ways around vendor fees? And absolutely yes, because you know your girl is hashtag balling on a budget. So one of the vendor fees we actually managed to get around was if we brought in an outside vendor that wasn't connected to the resort, we were going to be charged for our um, photographer who was actually a friend of mine, a former client of mine actually, who basically was like, take me on a trip and I'll do your photos. And I was like, yeah, girl, let's do that. First of all, she was freaking incredible, did an amazing job, but the way, but the way we were able to get around the vendor fee, because I think that the resort we did our wedding at was, I think it was like seven, 500 to $700 maybe for a fee if you brought in an outside vendor that wasn't associated with them. So we had her attend our wedding as a guest. She literally booked through our travel agent and our room block. We paid for her trip as payment for the photos. So since she was technically a guest, they couldn't charge her a vendor fee. So that was how we got around that one. The next question that's on Instagram is who, or how did you choose who to invite? So obviously with a destination wedding, you're not going to invite 100% of the people that would be at your wedding back home unless you wanna pay for all of that and you wanna have that many people, then maybe you do, that's great. For us, doing a destination wedding, we love traveling, but we also wanted it to be more intimate and more personal. So it basically took what a guest list would have been for us at home, which would have been stupid freaking high, and cut it down to you know the really important friends, family, people, mentors in our lives that we really, really, really wanted to be a part of this special day. It just really whittles your guest list down as far as like who's priority. But I will say like, there will be some people that you really want to be there that might not make the effort or be able to go. And then you might have some people that you didn't really expect to be for sure yeses that will literally go above and beyond to make sure they are there. So it definitely changes your guest list a little bit, but the way I looked at it was as long as the people that were like 100% must have non-negotiable guests for me were there, then I had to go into it with the idea that maybe a few people wouldn't be there and that I wouldn't get upset about it. But I basically had like a core group of like my immediate family and closest friends that I was like, as long as these people are there, I'm cool with it. The next question was, how did you decide to do a destination wedding? So if you have followed Andrew and I or me for any amount of time, I'm obsessed with travel. Andrew and I's third date, he ended up going on a trip with me to Maine that was supposed to be a solo trip. Literally our third date was going to the airport. So Andrew and I love traveling. We travel all year, like we travel as much as possible. So for two like travelaholics, it honestly just seemed like kind of a no brainer. We love travel and 
what better way to bring our love of travel and the people we care about the most and one of the most important days of our lives all into one amazing time. It just, honestly, it was a no brainer. When I brought it up and I looked at Andrew and I was like, I wanna do this, he was like, let's do this. And we were like 100% on board from day one. The next question was, did you always want a destination wedding and did y'all get a deal for family and friends? Honestly, no, I did not always wanna do a destination wedding. I think if I was younger when I got married, I got married, I was 30, I was a couple days away from being 31. I think if I was younger, maybe all of the extra things would have been a little bit more important to me the whole production you know all the big extra things you spend money on all the little details but I think just as I got older I started to realize that you know the money the extra things that don't really mean anything I just wanted to do the things that were important to me you know Andrew and I have big financial goals we just bought a house we want to have children soon it seemed a little silly for me personally to invest that much money on a wedding at home that wasn't small or small-ish, I guess I should say. I feel like when I was younger, I probably would have wanted all the things and all the extras and the huge bachelorette party and this and this and this. I just feel like because I'm older, it just, what was really important was our marriage and the people closest to us. And I wasn't really as worried about the big, huge, grand wedding thing as much as I would have been in years past. And did we get a deal for family and friends? So when you do a destination wedding, a lot of times they will do a room block for you. And if people book through your room block, you do get special discounted rates. Sometimes you as the bridal couple will get perks, upgrades. If you guys follow me on Instagram, I posted a story of us freaking out because we didn't know that we had enough people come that it qualified us for a room upgrade. So we were already doing an oceanfront suite because we wanted to be on the water, but when we walked into this room and realized they had upgraded us into like a corner suite with a wraparound balcony with hammocks and a living room and a huge bedroom and our bathroom was the size of literally like a public restroom, like we were freaking out on my Insta stories. So there definitely were some deals that we got, you know, our families got a special rate for our wedding and there was a lot of like perks and extras that were included if you had a certain amount of people coming in your group. So I knew this question was gonna pop up on here somewhere and it was, how did you do it sober? And you guys, I get it. Most sober people would not think, let's go to an all-inclusive resort in Mexico for our wedding where everybody can eat and drink as much as they want. So for me specifically, I have been to this resort two times prior to our wedding being there. And you guys know that I am very comfortable being around alcohol. I don't like, people can drink around me and it doesn't really trigger me. And I also love a virgin margarita. So I did it sober by honestly just having a good time and realizing that even though alcohol was there, I didn't need it to have fun. You bet your ass your girl had virgin marks, virgin pina coladas all day in the pool with everyone else, having a great time, cheersing, and actually our toast that they did after our ceremony, I asked for a non-alcoholic beverage to be in the toast. So they basically made me like a Shirley Temple with Marciano cherries in it. And that is what everyone toasted with. And nobody said anything about it. Andrew kind of like asked me why I did it ahead of time when I told him, but I said, it's my wedding. I want to be able to do the toast too. So I just made everyone do a toast right after our ceremony with non-alcoholic beverages. And like I said, no one said a word about it. I preach over and over again in my content, you know, communication and boundaries. I set certain boundaries for this destination wedding because of my sobriety that were non-negotiables. Like I didn't want them doing tequila limbo lines at my reception you know for everyone like I didn't want the whole day to be around alcohol and I just I made the changes I had to make to be comfortable with it I will say destination weddings like some of the people at the resort don't speak very good English so like when we were getting drinks sometimes they would give you a hard time if you were asking for no alcohol and they'd be like come on just a little bit and kind of like give you shit about it and like I said some of them didn't speak fluent English so there was a couple times literally like I was pregnant. I literally just told people like, oh, I'm having a baby. And then they were like, oh, baby, okay. And then they made a virgin drink. So fun fact, if we ever have that problem, just tell everyone you're pregnant and they'll take it very seriously. <laughs> the next question was, was it hard getting your friends and family to fly to a wedding? Like complaints. Yes and no. There were certain people I knew weren't going to be able to go, whether it was financial reasons, family reasons, children reasons. You know, there was a lot of people that I was unsure if they would for sure go. There were definitely some complaints. 
some of them being for my own immediate family and I just had to go into it like, hey, here's what we're doing. This is what we really want to do. We would love for you to be a part of it. And I just had to tell my immediate family members like, look, this is really important to me and this is my wedding. It's not your wedding. You don't get to decide what my wedding is like, you know this is what I really want to do. And it's, I actually at one point had kind of like a really upsetting like argument with someone where I was crying and I said, this is what I really want to do. And this is my most important day of my life. And you're, you're mad at me for doing something that I really want to do. And I was very upset about it. I, I hated the idea that this was something I was so excited about and someone else was kind of getting down on me about it. So I just really had to stick to my guns and be like, this is what I want to do. This is what matters to me. And this is my day. Because at the end of the day, it's your wedding. It's no one else's wedding. Don't worry about what anyone else cares about. It's about what you care about and what is important to you because you're going to remember it for the rest of your life. And I didn't want to ever be at a point in my life where I looked back and thought, wow, I really wish I would have done that destination wedding and know that I didn't because of other people because that's just not fair. And I feel like I would always have a little bit of like resentment or, you know, be a little upset about it. How did you go about finding the place you wanted to do it at? So as I mentioned, this was my third time at this resort. I went to this resort once previously just on a vacation. The second time I went, actually, we were working a destination wedding with 24 Lux. So one of my hairstylists and Andrew was with me. Andrew was my boyfriend at the time, but he came too. And so I'd been there twice. So I had seen a wedding the second time. And Andrew and I were literally sitting on the beach and I was like, if we ever get married, like I want to do this. And we agreed right then and there that that's what we wanted to do. I will say I'm a little bit of a control freak as far as I want to know, especially traveling, I like to know what a hotel is like, that it's clean, that it's nice, that the food is good. I think I would have had a much harder time planning this had I not been to that resort before and just going off of like the internet. I feel like I almost would have wanted to like do a short weekend trip to check the place out before I booked it just to have that peace of mind that everything was going to be nice because you guys know sometimes like photos online are super deceiving and I would hate to be like my wedding to be at one of those places where it looked so great and then it was like reality not so great once you got there. So we had been there before. It made me feel much better about the whole thing because I kind of had an idea how things ran there and how things were there already. I've heard destination weddings are a lot cheaper than weddings in the U.S. Is that true? Yes, depending on what kind of wedding you're doing in the U.S. So I can honestly tell you guys our destination wedding package that we did started at $4,500, which included 30 people. It included dinner. It included a couple things like a, a couple's massage. We decided to also upgrade our room though. So you've got to remember, and it might be different at some resorts, but the specific resort we went to, like our trip was separate from our wedding package. So the wedding package started at $4,500. And I think we ended up spending an additional just over a thousand because we added on some extras that weren't included in the package. A lot of the packages are very like cut and dry base minimal things. So we added on an extra speaker, a wireless mic. We didn't do a DJ. We actually just made a playlist on an iPad because we didn't have a bridal party and we weren't doing like huge 15 dances in a row type thing. So we just did our own DJing to be honest. And the other thing we added on, what was it? Oh, we added on our video. So we did do video through the resort's videography company. And I wanna say our one hour of filming, which is a 10 minute video was $500. So we spent just over a thousand on that. We added a cocktail hour, which was discounted because of our group size, but we did add on a cocktail hour, which was also extra money. But I mean, between our wedding package and our trip, which we did again, the waterfront, you know, we had the a little bit more expensive than an average room there, which we then got upgraded for free, which is cool. I mean, I wanna say our wedding was at or under 10 grand. Obviously, there were a lot of extra things you wouldn't have to add if you wanted to keep it cheaper. They had smaller packages, which were even less, and you wouldn't necessarily have to do an upgraded room. You could just do a standard room to keep your costs even lower. But yes, everything was cheaper for us because if we would have done it here, like I just feel like at home when you plan weddings, everything is extra, everything's a separate vendor, so many little details and things where everything there was really taken care of me in the package from the bouquet to the boutonniere to the chair sashes to the, like everything basic was included in it and it included 30 people, which we did have to pay for a few extras. I wanna say we paid $70 per head after 30. 
but overall not a bad thing and definitely cheaper than if we would have done it here this question was are there wedding packages yes there were multiple packages like i said they all had different things we did one of the higher up ones we didn't want to do the base one but they literally i think had one that was like a thousand dollars that was literally just like the two of you on the beach if you were eloping so there's tons of packages so check with different resorts to see what they offer how to find the best place and the safest do your research I, a lot of people were scared about going to Mexico, I'll be honest. Like a lot of people, some didn't actually come because of Mexico, but I knew that you literally fly to Cancun, get on a shuttle, the shuttle takes you straight to the resort, and then we didn't leave the resort. So it wasn't like we were running in like the hills with the drug cartel in Mexico. <laughs> like we were at a five-star resort, you guys, so it's safe. But I do understand why people get nervous because it's another country, you hear about all this horrible shit on the news, all this crazy shit that happens there. So I totally get why people are nervous, but just do your research, look around. And I always, my mom was seeing things on the internet about people being killed by the cartel, and I was like, mom, where are these people? They're not at like touristy destination resorts near the big cities. They're out in like the fucking rural areas and why are they involved with the cartel? Why are they around? Like do your research. Steps you have to do before the actual destination, LOL. So we did a few phone calls with the wedding planner at the resort, which I do want to speak on this a little bit because it was something that I was very nervous about. We did one phone call with the resort, a nice long one, did our whole spreadsheet, and I will say like the language barrier can be a thing. Getting a phone call to Mexico and coordinating it and actually making it happen long distance was a thing because you can't just like pick up the phone and call Mexico and like, hey, just wanted to make sure this detail is right. Like, that wasn't an option for us. So after we did our first phone call, I did feel much better because we went through a lot of the details. I will say when we were communicating over email and finalizing things, there was a little bit of frustration and it got a little confusing for a minute where I was kind of like, what is going on? Because we had more than one wedding planner, like someone else stepped in halfway through and took over for the first person. And I just feel like we weren't on the same page or maybe she didn't have all the info that we had given her and they were just asking the same questions over and over again. And I was like, hello, we already did this. But I will say once we got there, we set up a meeting. Everyone does a meeting at our specific resort. And we did a meeting with her. We walked through everything. She took us on a nice little weddings golf cart and took us around the resort and showed us where everything would be and how it would go. And after that, I was a million times more at ease, I will say. It's a little weird not being there, not being able to talk to people. But once I got there and met with them, I felt a million times better and everything was great. Honestly, the wedding went amazing without a hitch. Like everything was awesome. I just can't say enough. I was literally lounging by the pool until like 2 p.m. when I had to get ready that day. So stress-free. Like everything is just taken care of for you. And someone just mentioned to me the other day, like it seems like you were so relaxed the entire time. And I said, I didn't have to worry about flowers. I didn't have to worry about anything getting set up. I literally just had to get dressed and show up down there. And that was it. And then I just had to go to my reception and plug in my iPad for my music. Like that was literally it. It was the most stress-free experience I've ever had in my life. Do you have to get legally married here before or can you do it after? Okay, so this is an important point. I guess I should tell you guys where we got married. I didn't say that yet. We got married at Barcelo's Maya Palace Grand Resort. It is in Riviera Maya. You fly into Cancun. It's about an hour outside of there. You take a shuttle um, bus that picks you up from the um, airport. So it's really close to like Playa del Carmen, Tulum, and Cancun area. I love it there. It's a five-star resort. Everything is beautiful. Like it is the most beautiful place I've ever stayed. So when you get married out of the country, it does not count in like in the US. It does not count here. So Andrew and I, regardless of getting married there, we're not going to be legally married here because that doesn't transfer between countries. It's just a national thing. So we had to get married legally here in the US in Detroit, either before or after our wedding for us to be legally like by the books married. We chose to do it before so that when the wedding actually happened in Mexico, we were actually married. And I think it also kind of took the stress off of it a little bit because we were actually already married when we got married in Mexico. So it was just basically like a bigger celebration for it. And you know, with the dress and everything extra, but we weren't actually worrying about like the marriage part of things and the legal side of things because it was already taken care of. But I know people that have done it after as well. So it's just kind of personal preference, I think, of when you want to do it. They did tell us we could leave 
legally get married in Mexico as well if we wanted to. We didn't really have any reason to, but they said if we did that, we were going to have to go to the hospital in Mexico and we got there and do blood work. And your girl was just like, not trying to do blood work in a Mexican hospital on my wedding trip. So let's just uh, cut that because I have no reason to be legally married in Mexico. Um, they do like a symbolic ceremony though. So for ours, it was, they gave us two um, jars of sand. One was pink, one was white, and you pour them into one jar. And it basically is a symbolism that when the sand is mixed, you can never unmix it. Um, you'll never be able to separate the two colors back out. So I thought that was really cute. I thought it was nice. We have it to keep. And they still go through the vows. You still repeat your vows. You still kiss the bride, all of that stuff. It's just more of a symbolic thing because we chose not to do the legal one in Mexico. Did you get any discount rates for rooms being booked? Yes, we did a room block. So everybody got special prices. And our place actually, I should mention, was really cool that someone actually found a cheaper price online after we booked it and they price adjusted everyone's rooms to match. So we all got like a small refund before the trip to adjust it to the pricing that someone else found online. But we did a room block so that there was a guaranteed room for people that were looking to book. And it also meant that all of our guests were booked in the same area of the resort, which was really nice because everyone knew each other pretty much. So everyone was in like the same area of room so they could meet up, they knew where everyone was, it was easy for us to find people, which was a really, really nice, just kind of extra thing for them to be able to do that. The next question, um, were your flowers, hair, and makeup included? So my package did include a bouquet, a centerpiece for a head table, Andrew's boutonniere, and then it also included hair, makeup, and a couple's massage. This is the specific level that we did. Like I said, there were all different packages. So you guys know I run a hair and makeup company for weddings and I am the lead makeup artist. So clearly no one was touching your girl's face on my wedding day. So I chose to do my own makeup one of my hairstylists actually came as a guest with her family because I've known her forever. So she did my hair, but it was included in my package. There was a salon on the resort grounds that I could have gone to the salon and gotten ready there. And then we actually did look into getting some extra centerpieces for our tables because it didn't come with centerpieces for our package. When we honestly looked at it, we only had like four or five tables, but the pricing of these centerpieces was a little high in my opinion. So when I factored it out, I was like, am I really about to drop an extra grand for four arrangements of flowers? Like, no, we're not doing that. And I mean, the resort is beautiful as is. So no one even realized, you know, they didn't have centerpieces. No one was going to be like, why didn't you put flowers on the tables? Because the whole environment itself is gorgeous. So this person said, on the way to my honeymoon on our flight, I witnessed a bride get upset because they promised her a spot for her dress to hang and there wasn't one. Where did you put your dress? So I was actually like not sure how that was gonna go. I did get to hang my dress. There is a small, short, like hanging cabinet. We flew Delta and we were able to hang my dress in there. Obviously the bag was so long, we had to like fold it in the bottom. I have heard a, I heard a story though from someone about how there were so many brides on her flight, which I don't know what the odds are of you having multiple brides on your flight, but they had no more room to hang anything. And so she had to put her dress in the overhead like carry-on storage bin. I personally don't think mine would have fit up there. I know some people would get upset about that, but I brought a hand steamer that I literally found on Amazon in case I had to do something with my dress where it got messed up so that I could steam it and it would be back to normal. I'm sure the resort probably would have even, you know, had laundry there and could have pressed it too if I really wanted it pressed, but I was able to hang my dress, but I know people that haven't been able to, and I just liked that because I liked knowing where my dress was. I was not about to check that. I wanted to know where it was and that I had it because that was like one of the most important things, obviously, for my wedding day. So another question I got a lot was about my wedding band. I did get a wedding band, which if you're listening to this on the podcast, you won't be able to see what I'm talking about, but I did get a wedding band. I haven't had it soldered yet because I believe I want to maybe like do a ring stack one day, but I am obsessed with my ring. I love it so much. I'm just, I think it's beautiful. I love it. So hype. And I will say we actually ordered Andrew's wedding bands online because we looked at them at the jewelry place when we were getting my band and they were, you know, costly and we were able to find them online, like the exact same rings for a little bit less. So Andrew actually got several so that they could coordinate with his watches because who are we? But he wanted to get a few to coordinate with his watches. So we actually found his online cheaper, which is a hack. If you're a dude or if you need to buy one for a dude, definitely check that out because like they were like 
four times as much in the jewelry store as we found them online. You know, I went into this destination wedding knowing that it was going to be super fun. And I do want to talk about one thing that a lot of people didn't really understand when I said it on social media or wherever, but we actually only stayed at the resort for five nights, six days. A lot of people were like, oh, are you going to do two weeks? Are you staying another week for your honeymoon? And I was like, no. To me, and Andrew and I had many conversations about this, I really wanted us to have time, just the two of us, after our wedding to celebrate it. And I knew with how Andrew and I are, with how many people we had coming, and just, you know, how it is, we were gonna wanna be with the people or hang out with people while they were there because they traveled for us. And that was, you know, costly, it was time. And so we went into it knowing that we weren't going to get much alone time during this trip, which was why we established way early, hey, let's do five nights because all inclusives per night, especially in a bigger room, are costly. And, you know, let's save those extra days that we would have done and use that money to do a honeymoon later, just the two of us. So we are kind of going back and forth right now with what exactly we want to do to see we're going between road trip cruise and something else and we're just trying to figure out like what what'll be best for us and when we're gonna do it because like destination weddings I will say are not as private you're with people the whole time but we had a freaking blast like we got to hang out all day every day with our friends and family at the beach swimming in the ocean with sea turtles at the pool dancing like eating together like we had such a good time and the way I looked at it was like when are you ever going to get to do this again? When will you ever go on a trip with all of your friends and family again like this and have this much fun? So we really, you know, were with everyone the whole time, spending time with people, just having a freaking blast. And we looked at it as we'll have our alone time later because I didn't want to, you know, not spend time with the people that were there or only have certain small amounts of time by ourselves because I think we deserve to have a honeymoon where it's just the two of us. So we're still planning that out, but I do think that's something to think about going into it because if you're doing a destination wedding and you have a group coming with you, like realize that you're not going to have that kind of alone time. It's not going to be as romantic, as private. And I felt bad being like, hey, leave us alone for this entire day because we don't want to be around you. So that's something I just had to know going into it that it was going to be like that. So I am going to throw in a little bit of like a little sneak peek at the end of this with some of our photos and stuff. As soon as I get our video, I plan on posting that too as long as I can legally. Um, I just have to make sure I'm good with all that, but I am so excited to share it with you guys. There is an entire highlight on my Instagram if you wanna go watch the entire week of Insta stories. I have it on a highlight on there so you guys can go check it out um, and follow along. And it's gonna be like you were there because it's so cool. But I'm gonna throw in some of those photos next. But before I do, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching this video today. Thank you for being supportive and being a part of the whole wedding experience with me on social media if you were following along. I loved it so much and I love that you guys were able to share in it with me. If you guys love this video, make sure you leave me a thumbs up. Leave some comments down below if you have had a destination wedding, if you have any questions or comments about anything about the process, and I will totally answer them for you guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button before you leave so you don't miss anything else. I will have my face on the screen here per usual. If you click it, you'll be subscribed to my channel, and I will have a couple other videos for you guys to check out as well. But until next time, I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye.